well-educated, skilled workforce is increasingly seen as a key success in today's global knowledge-based economy. Employers and unions play a key role in building a better skilled and more competitive workforce. Workplace and union adult learning helps to maintain and upgrade the skills and knowledge of the workforce and can also help to enhance the skills and knowledge of the more educationally disadvantaged working adults. This video will provide an overview of adult learning in the workplace and in unions. Based on the classification systems that were presented in video clip 8.1, they could be considered Type 4 agencies by Schroeder, non-educational organizations by Darkenwald and Merriam, Type D institutions by Kowalski, and for-profit sponsors by Apps. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. How would you classify adult learning in the workplace and unions based on the classifications that were introduced in the video clip 8.1? What experience, if any, do you have learning as adult in the workplace or in unions? What is the scope and nature of adult learning in the workplace and unions in Canada? And what are some of the similarities and differences of adult learning in the workplace and in unions? Workplace adult learning and training refers to learning that takes place in the workplace, usually on the job. It includes training under normal operational conditions and off-site training, which is conducted away from the workplace. The major players in this sector are employer organizations, industry training bodies, enterprises, and associations of employees. The OECD indicates that job-related training dominates adult education. In almost all countries surveyed by the OECD, job-related training accounted for more than 70% of all education and training courses taken by adults. Many large businesses use training as an incentive to attract potential workers and train employees for their specific needs. Some larger enterprises also have their own training centers within the firm. Research conducted in Canada and the U.S. confirms that employers finance a significant proportion of adult education, even non-job related training. Employers are the main external source of financial support for adult education. According to the Canadian Council of Learning's 2008 Survey of Canadian Attitudes Towards Learning, the forms of employer support that Canadians typically received for their formal work-related training were paid time while on training, employer provided or arranged the training, employer helped for training costs, or unpaid time off. In Canada, the industrial sector provides more adult learning opportunities to employees in other sectors. Workplace adult learning is also more common in finance and insurance, information and cultural industries, communication and other utilities, and education and health related sectors. The retail and real estate sectors were among the least likely to offer their workers sponsored learning opportunities. Workplace adult learning is also more prevalent among workers in larger firms and among younger workers with higher education and skill levels. Governments in Canada have put in place a number of policies and programs to support workplace learning. For example, Quebec has legislation requiring a minimum level of investment in training by firms, and Ontario has recently introduced an apprenticeship training tax credit. Internationally, governments have adopted a wide range of policies and supports to encourage workplace learning. These include framework policies and legislation, and financial incentives for firms and individuals. Financial incentives can take the form of tax measures, as well as subsidies, grants, and loans. Adult learning in unions consists of programs directly organized or developed by unions and central labor bodies, some of which are joint union management programs. According to the Canadian Council on Learning, Unionized businesses are more likely than non-unionized companies to support adult learning opportunities. Studies suggest that membership in a trade union significantly affects employees' level of participation in both formal and informal learning. Unions play a key role in promoting formal and informal work-related learning through courses, events, and workshops. Some unions have highly developed training facilities, while others have merged with college programs to broaden the scope of available programming and to extend the credentialing. Unionized workers are more likely to receive formal training about new work technologies, technical or professional upgrading, and various kinds of teamwork and problem solving. They also receive more courses on employee rights and benefits and occupational health and safety. Most courses taken by workers are to some degree job related. Unions also play a key role in adult learning by encouraging employers to offer adult learning opportunities for their employees. Unions in Canada represent over 4.3 million workers in virtually every labour market sector and occupational groups. Learning practices by unions are seen in varied types of education programs, literacy, workplace programs, apprenticeship, 
pre-apprenticeship and work skills training, labor education, programs that combine and build links between some or all of these areas through integrated initiatives. Statistics Canada's Adult Education and Training Survey data, collected in 1993 and 1997, showed that unionized workers participate more than non-unionized workers in general and job-related adult education and training activities, and tend to benefit more from employer sponsorship of their training. As in other areas of union activity, education builds solidarity, promotes critical thought and democratic participation, and aims to affect change in the workplace and beyond. Within union-based education, there's extensive use of trained peer instructors. This peer-to-peer -peer training approach often includes the matching of worker trainers or tutors with staff facilitators or, or educators from the public education system. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. What classification system from video clip 8.1 do you find most useful for classifying adult learning in the workplace and unions? What experience, if any, do you have learning as an adult in the workplace and unions? How does this compare to other adult learning experiences you've had? What is the scope and nature of adult learning in the workplace and unions in Canada? And what are some of the similarities and differences of adult learning in the workplace and unions?